Tonight, no free testing and no law to self-isolate. All of England's COVID restrictions are to go. And in the sport at half past, I'll be live in Dumfries at the Scottish Curling Championships, talking to a few people who have been involved in Team GB's Olympic medal success. And later, after being banned by Twitter, Donald Trump is back on social media, this time on his terms. Welcome to the nine. Living with COVID, it's a phrase that means many things to many people. Today, we learned what it means to Boris Johnson. The Prime Minister told MPs that all legal COVID restrictions on people in England will end from Thursday. So no legal requirement to self-isolate, even if you're positive, and no more contact tracing. And then this, from April, no more free COVID tests for the general public. Mr Johnson saying providing free tests for all had come at a vast cost. Andrew Kerr is our political correspondent. He's here. Andrew, this looks like it's going to be a big row between the Scottish and UK governments. Lawrence and a row brewing. Later in the programme, we're going to ask the Scottish Conservatives uh, just how far they think Nicola Sturgeon should follow Boris Johnson's COVID plans. Myrtle Fraser, coming up shortly. Now abroad, Russia's border with Ukraine has become a diplomatic tightrope over recent weeks and tonight Moscow has upset the balance once again. In the past few hours, the Kremlin has said it recognises the Eastern... Yeah, it's been a busy evening, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it feels like <laughs> tensions are on? genuinely ramping up today. Absolutely. And those two leaders, of course, addressing their countries uh, live in separate uh, and very different um, at televised addresses this evening. Boris Johnson actually talking specifically about COVID restrictions, but he was asked in that press conference about Ukraine. Vladimir Putin speaking to the Russian people very definitely and specifically about Ukraine itself. Uh, and just immediately in the, in the minutes after he'd made that statement on those two regions of Ukraine, uh, Luhansk and Donetsk, uh, I spoke to Alexei Levinson. He's head of social research at Levada. That's an independent polling organisation based in Moscow. I asked him how this evening's development and that statement specifically will be viewed inside Russia. Alexei Levinson there in Moscow and, and this story is moving quite quickly isn't it? The EU said about half an hour ago that they will impose sanctions. It sounds like individual targeted sanctions uh, in the light of President Putin's announcement. The UK government's expected to announce a package of sanctions again on Russian individuals and entities, businesses and so on tomorrow in that response in response to that announcement from Vladimir Putin about Luhansk and Donetsk. Yeah, they um, said that this was just the first tranche, didn't they? That it would be ratcheted up if Russian troops did make movements into Ukrainian territory. Yeah, the interesting thing with this is, I mean, un unlike pushing all those tanks across the border and having an all-out traditional style war, the experts, analysts think that Putin's thinking might be just mix it up a little bit in these two territories and see what the West does. If it was a full war, NATO would be pushed to respond with this they might divide Western opinion as to what to do next. Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, there we are. More on that tomorrow. Now, reprehensible. That's how an inquiry described the length of time it took a Scottish council to report concerns about a teacher to a child protection unit. Linda McCall was initially cleared of any wrongdoing, but last year a court found her guilty of assaulting five vulnerable children in her care between 2016 and 2017. An independent inquiry was ordered and Scottish Borders Council have, for the first time, apologised. Katrina Renton has more. Right, let's go back to our main story of the evening, though. The Prime Minister's plan to end COVID restrictions in England and remove access to free testing. We're going to hear from the First Minister on Scotland's next steps tomorrow. But first, to the sport, and it's a bit Special different tonight. Special sport tonight, Absolutely. indeed. Um, Iona is in Dumfries for us this evening. There you are. Uh, celebrating Team GB and Scotland's amazing curling exploits. How's it going, Iona? Oh, we absolutely are. It's great. Good evening here from Dumfries. We're at the Ice Bowl here this evening for the Scottish Curling Championships on the back of Team GB's medal success at the Winter Olympics. There's been real excitement here today and some of these young curlers will feel that one day they too could be in with a chance of winning an Olympic medal. We will get to more curling shortly, but first some football news as Premiership side St Mirren appear to be closing in on a new manager. The 
St Mirren's dugout. Now back to the Scottish Curling Championships and there's been a real buzz around here today as this takes place just one day after the Winter Olympics closing ceremony in Beijing. Now Team GB took home two medals. It was silver for the men's curling team but gold for the women's. Now with more on that here's our sports news correspondent Chris McLaughlin. Well, perhaps if you're one of the millions gripped to the curling and thought maybe pass your mind on how you actually do it yourself. A little earlier, I tried out. Well, we didn't even get to the sweeping. That is another art in itself. But somebody who knows all too well how to curl and sweep is Olympic silver medalist Greg Drummond. Greg, it was Sochi 2014. Does that just feel like a lifetime ago? Does it still feel like yesterday? Now let's move away from the curling rink now and news of another trademark marathon victory for Andy Murray. Well, immediately after Murray's win, it was the return of world number one, Novak Djokovic. The Serbian was given a rapturous reception as he walked onto court in Dubai for his first match since being deported from the Australia on the eve of the Australian Open. The Serbian is not vaccinated against COVID-19, but he's free to play in Dubai, where vaccination requirement so another great week of curling awaits us and perhaps another future olympian behind us playing right now i think there's a future olympian on camera right now great technique Iona. well done thank you so much now, our sports news correspondent, Chris McLaughlin, is here to reflect a little bit more on the Winter Olympics. Chris, don't think anybody would question the level of success from Team GB's mm. curlers, certainly. But how does the sport and also the Winter Olympic team build on this success now? Now, tributes have been pouring in for the music entrepreneur Jamal Edwards, who has died at the age of 31. Jamal was just a teenager when he launched SBTV, a platform into which he uploaded clips of his friends performing on the West London estate where he lived. Yeah, really sad news. Yeah, a short but extraordinary life. Absolutely that. Yeah. Absolutely that. Right, weather. Judith, it's been quite warm in the sun, hasn't it? You can start to feel the heat, can't you, in the yeah. sun? So we've got some hope on the horizon. Oh, huh. I fell off my shoes there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a nice day today, wasn't it? Actually, it turned it out was, yeah. well. And by the end of the week on Friday, it's going to be quite nice as well. But in between, it's going to be a wee bit unsettled. So, yes, we saw blue skies for many of us today. Uh, mainly dry pretty much across the country as well, save for a few showers. And the winds ease as well. Now, as far as the week ahead is concerned, it will be a windy old week. Not the winds we saw last week, I want to reiterate. Blustery showers in the mix with a wintry flavour as well later in the week. And it will feel cold, but as I mentioned, turning dry on Friday. So we have a couple of weather fronts coming our way tonight. First, a warm front. We're seeing that moving in at the moment, bringing a thicker cloud. But it's this cold front that will bring some heavy rain and uh, also some strong winds for a time. But then the winds veer into the west, and tomorrow it's a straightforward showery westerly, but it will be pretty windy. As far as tonight's concerned, we'll continue to see cloud feeding in across Scotland during the course of tonight. And then at the end of the night, we'll see this band of heavier rain pushing in to the west, west and the far north, accompanied by strong southern wind. That's where it stays drier and it turns milder as the night progresses as well. Here's our cold front sinking south. It moves very, very quickly tomorrow morning, clearing away into the North Sea as we head through the morning, then brightening up nicely with some blustery showers. It'll be a windy day pretty much everywhere. Strong westerly winds tweaking those showers through across the north now. So we will see some sunshine and drier into those in between, feeling cold though. I think eastern coastal areas will see the best of the driest and sunniest weather. It'll be really quite a nice day here with a fresh breeze here. Further west though we'll see those showers and for the dune hammers in Dumfrieshire it's going to be pretty much dry, just one or two showers with good sunny spells. The main focus of the showers will tend to be over the West Highlands and the northwest. Those winds near gale force at times for the west coast. Into tomorrow evening we'll start to see those showers gathering across the northwest ahead of really quite a squally band of rain for Wednesday. That moves south and eastwards as we head through the course of the morning with the widespread gales for a time. Behind it, we'll see blustery showers following on. They will turn increasingly wintry, even to lower levels later in the day. So inevitably, it'll feel cold. Nice to see Zor on your map. Just like that. It's just on the edge of Forfar, isn't That's it? That's right, yeah, well spotted. Learn two, That's right, a tribute to you, Laura. <laughs>
Finally, there were some joyful scenes today as one of the world's toughest travel bans was finally lifted. Australia's border has reopened, bringing joyful reunions and a boost to tourism. You know, I love an airport reunion. <laughs> it makes me emotional watching strangers. Really? Yeah. Do you know well, Simon Calder, the journalist, uh, travel writer for The Independent, was on that first flight. He said it was pretty empty, actually. Oh. It's going to it's gonna have to take a while to oh, pick up. Now. Right, that's it from us for tonight. I'm going to see you on Wednesday. You're back with Nick. I'll be here with Connor tomorrow. Bye-bye. Oh, see you soon.